no. It's fine, we fixed it. Alright, so this is a crit lacerate dual wield sword berserker. Uh, let's go ahead and run a map, we talk about it, but I tested a lot of variants today. This is a T16 Elder Underground C with Beyond. Um, basically, we started with two-handed mace crit, because I wanted to try Shockwave. Just to see what that felt like. Um, Shockwave is pretty good. I liked it a lot. We went through Earthquake, Flicker Strike. Um, what other skills did I try with it? I don't even remember. A bunch of stuff. Flicker Strike is really interesting with Shockwave, so shout out to uh, Rising Waters. I will link his Twitch and YouTube below in the description. But he was playing a... Uh, oh god, what's it called? The Anchor Mace Tidebreaker, I think. Crit two-handed Flicker Strike most of this league. And it looks really cool with Shockwave, so... Shout out to him for that idea, putting it in my head. Um, but yeah, we went through all of that stuff, and then I wanted to try a couple melee skills. We started messing with like Reeve, and winning, we went dual wield. Started Reeve, we started Blade Storm. I tried like Shattering Steel, whatever, all those other things. And then eventually I was like, hmm, wait, someone said Lacerate, and I was like, oh, I forgot about Lacerate. I had, the reason I didn't like Lacerate at the beginning of the league with my uh, Flying Purple People build is because I don't have as much attack speed as this, right? So it felt bad. Dual wielding gets a more attack speed, more damage bonus. Um, you're also Berserker with Blitz Charges, so we have 40% more attack speed from Blitz Charges. And it just, it feels amazing. It's super smooth, my Leap Slam is ridiculously fast. And I'm just using multi-modded, like, 400 DPS, 390-ish DPS weapons, which are pretty easy to make. Um, if you don't know how to do that, I'll explain it when we get to the gear section, but... We're just, we went with Berserker for the uh, attack speed, basically, and the Rage bonuses and whatnot. I did not take the more damage taken node, increased damage taken node, because it's just dumb. I'd rather just have rage and uh, the crit stuff, crit crit multi stuff. It feels very nice though, like this is probably the smoothest melee character I've played in a while, and I didn't invest stupidly heavily to get like really high attack speed weapons or anything. Like you could make these weapons yourself within a couple X each, most likely, or you can just like, you know, trade for them. Or you can use alternatives like Skava and Dreadbeak and Ons Might and whatnot. Oh, she's already dead. I didn't even realize she changed phases. Not the best breach placement, but that's okay. Yeah, Berserker, if you want to go fast and you want to do the most damage as a melee ascendancy right now, I'm pretty sure Berserker wins in every aspect right now. Except for survivability. We don't really have any defenses as a Berserker. It's mostly just deeps. So if you're okay with being reliant on your ability to dodge and move and whatnot for your DPS and survivability, then you should try this. Pretty fun. All right, so let's get into it. Ascendancy, we are a Marauder. We ascended into a Berserker. I would recommend you grab Crave the Slaughter first. You get movement speed, attack damage, attack speed per like five rage or per some amount of rage, right? Up to 50 rage. And you get a chance to deal double damage per four rage, which is quite a bit. And we'd also take Rite of Ruin which gives us cannot be stunned and triples the rage effect. So instead of 1%, we get 3% attack damage, 3% attack speed, 1% or 3% movement speed. Pretty freaking fast. The only annoying part is you degen a little bit, but I didn't take Volpact. And uh, without taking Volpact, this tree has enough regen and with Blood Rage as well on top of this degen to completely ignore it. So that's nice. On um, the other side, we take Flawless Savagery for crit, Flat Fizz, crit multi, and Blitz for the up to 20 blitz charges, which gives us 2% more attack speed each. That's 40% attack speed per blitz charge. I'm sorry, 40% more attack speed total, which is ridiculous. We also get blitz on crit and reduce crit per blitz, but that's okay. 10% reduced times 20 is 200% reduced. That sounds like a lot, but then you look at nodes like this. This is what, 40, 60% crit right there. And then another 30, 30, 20 there. So that's another 80 crit, right? So we're, we basically already invalidated how negative this is, and we still get the 40% more attack speed on top of that, so it's disgusting. Um, as for the tree, it's a fairly basic tree. We get lots of life, uh, damage, attack speed, crit, life. Uh, what we got even more? Cricker multi here, we are impale. Uh, these nodes here and this cluster here, plus dread banner, will give you 100% impale with a bunch of impale effect. If you don't know what impale does, it's more or less physical penetration. It translates into more physical damage. Um, each You hit an enemy, it adds an impale stack, and the next hit it applies that impale damage again and again and again, up to five stacks, or seven if you have a Watcher's Eye, which I don't currently use. But you have to hit seven times to get that, and I'm like two-shotting things, so I decided to go against it. 
Uh, but basically, once you hit something five times, you're at max impale stacks, and then it's multiplied by your impale effect to hit the enemy for that physical damage again. So if you have these nodes in Dread Banner, you have around 112-ish percent more physical damage with five stacks. If you had seven, I think it's like a 120, 130-ish percent more physical damage, which is quite a lot. Um, we got lots of crit crit multi with swords, life nodes, life nodes, the life or sword nodes over here, dual sockets, all the melee crit crit multi up here as well, more life, um, and then over here we have some weapon range, AOE, life, attack, speed. I needed dex, so I actually took this weird jewel socket to get the dex instead of putting it on gear. Um, one frenzy charge, one leech node, and more sword nodes and multi nodes, attack speed while dual wielding stuff. Pretty basic. Uh, jewel sockets. Watch your side if you can get one of these with like, there's a lot of good ones here. You have Intimidate with Pride, Double Damage with Pride, Attack Physical Damage with Pride, uh, Double, two additional Impale Stacks with Pride, and then we have Crit Multi with Precision, Attack Damage with Precision, Attack Speed with Precision, and I think there's something else with Precision that you can use. I have this Flash Charge when you crit, so it's like the Surgeon's mod for all of my Flasks, which is kind of nice. Um, but if you want like boss damage, go for the impale stacks. If you want all over round damage, intimidate is 10% more damage for you, so it's pretty nice. Um, other jewels you're gonna look for life plus damage, 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 basically. Uh, this is life double multi damage. I would recommend prioritizing crit multi because you can get quite a lot of it out of jewels. Like this jewel is what 26 multi. Uh, this one is 24 multi. This one is just 15 multi. But they're all just life damage, damage, damage. So. Start with life damage, if that's all you can afford, then get life double damage, then life triple damage, work your way up. So for the Pantheons, I have Soul Solaris and Growth Cult, which are not maxed. I would recommend maxing those, but I'm lazy. Um, and Bandits go for Alira because we're a crit build. Alira gives us crit multi and all res, which is kind of nice. As for the actual gear, so there's a lot of options here. Um, starting with weapons, I have these swords, which are around 392 and 409 DPS. That's the PV trade macro if you don't have it. The synthesized foils for the explosion thing, but again, not necessary at all. I just have them because I have them in my stash. You don't need the explosions. You can also just use a hemophilias to get the same effect. Bleeding enemies you kill explode instead of just enemies kill explode, you know? We do have bleed from the skill tree. Attacks cause bleeding here. So we have like 25% and we hit stupidly fast which means that you don't really need to worry about it. Um, if you don't have these explosion swords, you can just multi-mod these. So to make one of these swords, you get a decent level base, like IID3 or higher, just a normal foil, and then you just alt spam it until you hit one of the mods that you want. So you're looking for either high percent fizz or high hybrid fizz. This is hybrid physical damage accuracy um, or high flat fizz. Any of those three mods by themselves, you regal it, whatever you hit doesn't matter, or unless it's really good, that you try to unnull off that shitty mod, and then you just multi-mod it out. So you end up with something like this. It's just fizz damage, attack speed, crit. If you can get some extra chaos damage, or if you want hits can't be evaded as your last prefix, that works as well. If you have a hybrid one, you can craft percent flat, attack speed quality, crit. This one had percent, so I put flat, attack speed, crit quality, and then I had an open prefix, and I don't need the hits can't be evaded mod, so I just went for the extra chaos damage. The rest of your gear is all fairly basic stuff. Uh, if you don't have these swords, you can use things like, I think I mentioned Skava, Onsmite, Dreadbeak, or like a 300 DPS, 350 DPS, 400 DPS rare. You can get higher DPS than this. I think there's some 600 DPS foils in League at the moment, which are pretty good. Obviously, these are just like, you know, this is probably mid-end game is what I would classify these as. Um, gloves, life resists. If you can get some leech, flat fizz. If you can actually get mana leech and life leech on gloves, you could drop these three skill points. Or on jewelry, like somewhere, drop these three and put it into life nodes. You know, you could do that pretty easily. Um, I don't have those. I just have my insanity gloves, which I don't think I need. My attack speed with full blitz is too fucking fast. So I would recommend just getting, you know, flat phase, spike gloves, attack speed, accuracy, resist, life, whatever you need, right? Um, let's see what's next. Belt. I have a Stygian. You can craft Stygians using, I think, jagged fossils to get physical damage on them. And then pristine for life. Just spam those until you get a decent one. It's got life resist, physical damage on it would be great. You can craft increased damage as your last prefix. Uh, boots. I have Onslaught boots. Again, don't need these. Life resist. You don't even need the movement speed because we leap slam everywhere. So get as much life and as much resist. And if you need int or dex, get it here. Um, you could potentially get like a... Mm, you want like a fortify pair of boots maybe? Elder boots with fortify. So you can put your leap slam there if you want. And you can take out fortify from the main links and put in a different support there. Totally up to you. 
Uh, what's next? Helmet, life resist. If you can get an incursion helmet, there's a bunch of incursion modded helmets out there that have a tier one resist or what looks like a tier one resist, and then physical damage taken as X. Uh, cold fire lightning, they match. So just get one of those that has some like stats on it, you know, nothing crazy. Life plus that mod is good, but just get as much resist as you can, accuracy if you need it. Um, rings, I have two steel rings. You're gonna want steels because they give that flat fizz. If you can get an elder steel ring, that's really expensive with like melee damage, life on hit, crit multi, stuff like that, that's really good. But you don't need that, just any any random rare ring with physical damage, life, resist on it will do you fine. You probably don't even need the mana cost craft because this is fairly cheap already, but if you're worried about it, then throw that on. If you're not worried about it, get some more physical damage. Um, my other ring is just life resist, flat fizz. My amulet, so this is a shaped amulet with extra cold. I wanted some cold damage so that I could actually shatter. We are an impale build, so we're not heavily investing into elemental damage stuff, but I wanted to be able to shatter mobs so I don't have to worry about things like porcupines. Um, and I'm using a Herald of Ice setup to like apply curses to enemies. So being able to shatter and freeze is kind of handy. You can get a fairly cheap shape amulet with like life Fizz is extra cold and maybe some flat fizz on it for probably nothing. They're really cheap now because everybody's using Duressos for Cyclone or really high flat fizz elder amulets, but shaped amulets are pretty uh, non-meta at the moment. Um, what's next? Chest piece. So you can get a lot of damage out of your chest piece. Uh, the way you make one of these is you grab an elder chest. It doesn't matter if it's an astral plate or what. Just get a decently like, like I-80 or higher elder some kind of chest piece. And then you're going to spam either serrated and jagged fossils on it. So serrated gives you the attack set mana cost and maim. Oh, you don't need jagged, sorry. Just serrated. Just serrated and like pristine for the life roll. Spam serrated. You'll be able to achieve the level one maim, the base crit, and the mana cost, and then life as the prefixes. If you want more resistances than that, use a prismatic fossil, a pristine, and a serrated. So you can get like resist plus crit. Elder, the only elder mod is the crit though. These two you can get on any chest. If you don't, if you can't afford an elder chest, just use um serrated fossils on any random chest until you get like a maim chest. That'll give you a pseudo seven link chest, which is really nice. Maim at level one is like 10% increased physical damage taken, which is more, and then a like 15 or 20% more physical damage on top of that. So it's a good amount of like extra damage basically, but you don't need it. It's just free deeps. Um, other stuff, you can get plus one support gems on a chest as well as a prefix. The base crit's really, really good as well since we have a little bit of reduced crit here that helps out quite a bit. As for your Helm Enchant and your other enchants, you're going to want Commandment of Fury on your gloves or Commandment of Spite. Fury is offensive on hit, of Spite is defensive when hit. It'll throw chilled projectiles when you get hit on Spite, or Fury throws attack fire projectiles when you hit things. Boot Enchant, you can go for Leech. Actually, that would probably be easier than getting the Leech on your gloves and rings and shit. You could replace the Boot Enchant, or this with Leech, most likely. It wouldn't be up for bosses unless they have adds, though, so be careful of that. I have attack and cast speed. Um... Leech or Regen is both a good option, are both good options. Helm Enchant, whatever skill you're using. This character works with Bladestorm, it works with Cyclone, it works with Reeve, it works with Lacerate, it works with like Vault Double Strike, Double Strike. I'm sure it works with Flicker Strike, Static Strike, Charge Dash, any of those skills. We want to try any of those skills with this character. Don't use Ellie Conversion builds. Ellie Conversion skills, sorry, don't use Charge Dash. Any of the other ones that are like pure fizz, try those if you don't like them, then switch to a different one. Get the relevant helm enchant for whatever your skill you're using, if you can afford it. Uh, Flas, got a Taste of Hate if you can't afford the shaped amulet. Taste of Hates are like nothing this league. You can get an extra cold damage mod here. It gives you less cold damage taken, physical damage taken is cold, which matches my helmet. That's kind of nice, we take even less damage out of it. I have a Diamond Flask with bleed immunity because sadly Berserker's not immune to bleed damage like Slayer is, so we gotta deal with that. Uh, Lion's Roar Granite Flask for the armor and the more melee damage. I have a Bottle of Faith because I'm in Standard. If you're not in Standard and can't get one of these, just use a uh, Unholy Might Flask. Sins Rebirth, which gives you 30% of your physical damage is extra chaos and immunity to ignite and blind, which is nice, but I'm just using this for the crit because it's a little bit broken. Uh, last Flask in Series Promise, just for more physical damage and some life leech. I'm sorry, more chaos damage based on physical damage and life leech. Um, you could also just use a Quicksilver here if you want to play Cyclone. Quicksilver is good there. Um, or you can just use another Basalt Flask for defensive purposes. If you're running Curse Heavy Maps, having a Curse Flask is really handy. But I haven't decided that I need that, so I'm just using that for now. Bottle Faith for now. Um, I believe that's all the gear. I'm using an Abyssal Socket in my belt with Onslaught. If you don't have Onslaught Boots, this is how you would get Onslaught. Get an Onslaught Abyssal Jewel with like Life, Crit Multi, some Flat Fizz, Attack Speed, Attack Speed if you crit recently, any of that stuff, Accuracy. That'll all work, but this is what I'm using. Um, and then for... what else am I missing? Jewels... I'm sorry, Gem Links. So your main six link, depending on what skill you're using, right now I'm using Lacerate with Impale, 
which I need to vol. Nothing happened. Uh, increased AoE, because I have so much damage, I'm using increased AoE. If you don't have enough damage, just put in a melee physical damage in this link. If you can afford to not take that for T16s, then put in increased AoE. Uh, but Impale, melee fizz slash AoE. Uh, Multi-strike for the attack speed. Pulverize, which I also need to vol. Damn it. And a fortify support, so that I fortify up all the time. If you had fortify on your movement skill, you could just as easily put that there and then just use like a maim if you don't have maim in your chest. Damage on full life if you want to. There's lots of options there. Um, AoE slash conk effect if you want to use melee fizz, you know, lots of, lots of stuff. Just don't use brutality if you have cold damage or chaos damage because it'll completely negate those damages, which is problematic if you want to shatter. Uh, other auras, we have a blood and sand. Pride. Blood and sand gives us more area slash damage. Um, Pride gives us more physical damage. And Dread Banner gives us the less of our Impale that we need to hit 100%, along with some Impale effect. I have those linked to an Enlighten because I wanted to be able to use a Herald of Ice on top of that. Herald of Ice with cold damage lets me shatter. So that's linked to Curse on Hit Assassin's Mark, which gives us power charge generation and more crit strike chance to help counteract the Blitz charges. Then I also have a Blood Rage to get the Leech and the Frenzy Charges on kill. Frenzy Charges are more, attacking, more attack damage, more attack speed for us, which is good. Um, I also have a War Chief set up here, and such Vol War Chief, sorry, with multiple totems, so you can have up to four totems. So you can have two regular and two Vol totems at the, at the same time, which is a lot of free damage. And then Conk Effect for the more multiplier. Um, over here we have a Precision level one. Depending on whether or not you have the Enlightened four or three will determine the level that you can put this up to. I could probably level this up a couple more times, but even a level one, which reserves 22 mana, gives us 40% crit and 93 accuracy, which is just stupid. Um, a random portal gem and a random open link here. You can do whatever you want with this and enhance maybe for the portal, I guess. I don't know. I don't know what to put in here. You could throw in a Vault Double Strike, I guess, if you wanted. My issue is I don't have enough buttons for all of my skills at the moment, so that's awkward. Um, in your gloves, if you have Insanity Gloves, throw your movement skill. If you want to use Rolling Blades, Leap Slam, Dash, Charge Dash would work as well. Any of those options are fine. I think there's other movement skills I'm forgetting about, but... Any of those work. I like Leap Slam because it goes up and down ledges and is really fast. I have a link to faster attacks, and then I have a cast one damage taking Lightning Golem. If you wanted a defensive setup here, you could take out those faster attacks and put in like a Steel Skin. We don't have Immortal Call. Stone Skin. Steel Skin. Steel Skin. We don't have um, Endurance Charge Generation for Immortal Call, so I would recommend against using that. Just use Steel Skin. Um, what other auras are there? I think that's all of our setups up here. No, we did all that. Yeah. Yep, okay, that's all the things. Sorry, I just streamed for 11 hours, I'm a little tired. But the path I'm building for this will be in the description. Again, if you're interested in seeing the uh, other variants, like the crit shockwave flicker strike or any of that stuff, let me know in the comments. If you enjoyed the video and you want to support me in what I do, there is a link to my Patreon in the description of this video. I'd appreciate it if you check that out. It does help quite a bit because I haven't been streaming much lately. And um, yeah, that means that there's no Twitch money coming in as much. So if you want to help me out and help me keep doing this full time, my Patreon is linked down below. But if not, no worries. I appreciate you guys watching the content regardless. Hopefully you're enjoying Legion still. Um, even though I'm back in standard, I'm still enjoying grinding this out. I might try to push this character with 100. I went from 92 to 95 today in like a couple, like eight hours, nine hours or so. So yeah, it's pretty fun. Just spamming T16 Elder maps. But uh, I'll see you guys in the next video. Thank you for watching. And uh, that'll be the mail.